The notion of free will has perplexed uh -huh. philosophers, theologians, and scientists for centuries. It's a fundamental question that raises questions about morality, destiny, and the very nature of what it means to be conscious. And now with the rise of artificial intelligence, that age-old debate has been rekindled. Can a creation of human ingenuity and a machine learning algorithm ever truly achieve free will? And if it can't, is that because potentially free will doesn't even exist for us? But before we can delve into this intriguing question, first we have to dissect what do we really mean when we say free will? And to help demonstrate how I think about it, let's play a game. So to play this game, I'm going to be using this keyboard, just a couple of the keys, the F and the D keys. This little free will game might just blow your mind because it shows you just how hard making a truly random or free choice is. So the way it works, I'm going to randomly be pressing the F or the D key on my keyboard here, and I'm really going to try to do it randomly, as random as possible in my head. Grando, I kind of random, I'm trying not to just go back and forth, like F, D, just stomping on it. You think you'd be closer to random, man. I'm just like... Like, like you, you try to make a pattern of just like a whole bunch of D's, whole bunch of F's, it figures that out. You go back and forth, figures that out. You try like one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three, one, one, two, figures that out. You try like one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three, one, one, two, three, 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 one. You just, it just kills me. How is this thing getting over 80% accuracy? Like do something random. This should be 50%, okay? It should only get it right half the time. So now we're gonna restart the game, but instead of using my free will to make decisions, I'm gonna use this random number generator. D, F, D, F, D, D, F, D, F, D, F, D, F, D, F, D, D. And look, there you have it. I mean, it goes up and down a little bit from 50, but it hovers around the 50% mark. That is truly random, and that is not what I'm capable of doing. So what's going on here? Well, the inventor of the program said that basically most people just don't know how to type randomly. And it turns out that all you need to do to pretty much predict the human brain with somewhat better than luck accuracy is just build a basic probabilistic model, even a very crude one like this. And from there, you just have to take the next leap and ask yourself, like, if a crude probabilistic model can do something like this really simply, is it that much of a stretch that a future artificial intelligence with a huge parameter model that has all sorts of information about us, that has all sorts of ways to monitor what we're doing, won't make incredibly accurate predictions about many aspects of our lives in the very near future? For sure it will. And if it's in the 99% or something where it seems like most of all the time it knows exactly what you're gonna do, we will certainly feel like free will has fallen to the wayside. Like for example, imagine Siri is just listening to you all the time and it starts predicting with 99 or 99.5% accuracy pretty much everything that you're gonna say right before you say it, to the point where if it starts to learn the pattern of you saying, hey Siri, before you do something, then it might just start to know when that occurs and just not even need you to say it. It will just know when to like pop into your life and take some kind of an action. And of course, if it's that close to predicting what you're gonna do all the time, it should start to predict how you're going to react to certain things. And then all of a sudden, it will be able to influence us with potentially extremely high accuracy in the near future. And at that point, it's not crazy to start thinking, oh, maybe I don't have that much free will if I can always be predicted. Or you could try to hold both those thoughts in your mind and say, of course I have free will to make decisions. I just basically can be predicted all the time, but they're still my free choices. So acting unpredictable is still actually being in the confines of predictable behavior. You might actually need to be like Two-Face or roll a dice to actually do something random that it can't predict, which is fine if you don't want to be predicted, but at that point, it's also not free will because you're just doing whatever it is that this random outcome says that you should do. That's like somebody moving your body in a certain way that you don't know. It's still not free will. According to the dictionary definition of free will, it's defined as the ability to make choices that are not predetermined by past events, genetic makeup, or current environmental factors. It's the notion that us as agents are actually capable of influencing the future, the world in a way that is not entirely caused by something else. And if you wanna just go by that definition and you think about this future computer with super high accuracy of prediction, we wouldn't have free will. But more disturbingly, it's this freedom that underpins our moral and legal responsibilities. Sam Harris has talked about how you don't really have conscious control over many things that your body does. For example, how many white blood cells you're gonna to create today is an immune system reaction. It is not consciously controlled. So you really aren't 
in a sense, responsible for how many white blood cell count you have tomorrow. But you also are the person, the body, the entire complex adaptive system that is actually making them. But it's like this weird scale where you kind of do have some control over your heart rate, your breathing, but not totally. Like you can't really just not breathe. If you do, your body will just pass out and start breathing again for you. But you can, if you consciously want to, sort of slow down your breathing. So there's different layers to us as a complex system about what we seem to have control over and what we don't. And in humans, at least, free will seems to only stem from the idea of a conscious self, which means that we have to be an entity that is at least aware of the past, present, and future and make decisions about how we're gonna guide those outcomes. So in a sense, it has to be the I that can reflect, deliberate, and decide on an action. But go ahead and try to find the origin of a decision in the brain. Like, that is not something that we understand yet. Every single thought in decision comes from a want, which seems to be dictated by some kind of a need, some kind of an environmental reaction, and some kind of complex cascade of an electrical signal that sort of grows and changes and moves throughout the brain, ends up in a certain location and sort of manifests into a want, which ends up being a decision. Now, you certainly don't have to believe this, but just for talking points, take the argument that if a system can predict another system with like 99% accuracy, then it no longer has free will. We could then take that design principle and flip it around and say, if we design some sort of large neural network, some super chat GPT like thing, and we could not predict with any accuracy what it's going to do, should we also start to assign that, you know, complex adaptive system the sense of free will? Like could free will be somewhat of a sliding scale where if you have no predictive power over a system, you should consider it to have complete free will? And as that slider moves down, meaning you can more accurately predict what it's gonna do, it has less and less free will. Like a kind of Einstein relativity thing where you actually never say that it exists or it doesn't exist, it's always something that's comparative to another system. And I personally sort of like to think about it in that way right now because it makes it less of sort of a magical, uh, human thing and it becomes more of a simple definition that can refer to how a less complex system is unable to make an accurate prediction of a more complex system, but it doesn't go in reverse. But it's also really easy to play devil's advocate and it's really easy to throw that idea out the window if you start to think about how some AI systems could have the illusion of free will because they're unpredictable, but that would not necessarily mean in any sense that they have the kind of free will that we think we have. For instance, an artificial intelligence system like Watson that can play Jeopardy or AlphaGo that can play Go or a beat a chess grandmaster might seem like it's acting out of its own volition, but it's actually bounded. It's creativity actually bounded by the algorithm that it was trained on and it's not necessarily free to do anything. It just seems to be hyper complex and predictive in one kind of basket of problems. Like consider the concept of reinforcement learning. Now that's a type of machine learning where the AI is learning to perform a task by trying to maximize some kind of a reward. I mean, one can really argue that the AI is choosing its action in order to obtain a goal. However, the AI's goal was pre-selected by the person training the model, the architecture in the first place. I mean, that could be kind of like us, but evolution had some desires that we were moving towards that were actually the architects of that overarching goal. For an artificial intelligence, these are probabilistic responses that are conditioned on prior data. They're just not autonomous decisions. AI at its core is basically a bunch of learning algorithms that's learning what? To make a decision, a decision that optimizes something, a decision that classifies something, a decision that makes an artificial intelligence do the amazing things that we're seeing it do right now. That's why we call this process machine learning. It is learning and you can't really have free will unless you've learned how to navigate the world well enough to actually do something in it. That's why it gets kind of tricky for me because sometimes the, it feels like the crux of the free will debate is really the question of like, does it feel like something to be a thing? For example, we know that it feels like something to be another human, but we can also imagine that it feels like something to be a frog, it feels like something to be an ant, but it probably doesn't feel like anything to be a rock. Probably doesn't feel like anything to be a shoe or a building or any other inanimate object. And if you wanna say that any complex system is a moral agent, like certainly people should be moral agents they have to usually come with free will. It's hard to imagine anything that has no choice to do anything, and it can even act in the moral sense in any way. So inevitably, some AI in the future is going to cause harm. Should we say that the agent itself made the decision that led to the harm? Should we 
fault the constructor of the system for the data inputs and the goal setting that they initially made for it. And if we do deem in the future that an artificial intelligence system actually does have its own free will, it should probably be the one who's held accountable. It should be the agent that's on trial for what it did and should be punished for what it did, if that even makes sense. I mean, the legal system would have to face this Herculean task of even figuring out how these moral agents should be measured upon one another and, and punished and how they would fit into our legal system with this kind of decision making. In fact, it seems so hard to do, probably wouldn't even happen. And that seems like a world where we have a lot of chaos. Like a world where the parent is always 100% responsible for whatever the child does. And that would change to a completely different way of parenting. Or if these AI agents do have free will, is it some kind of neutered version where we don't say, oh, it's also important because you have free will not to be forced into certain labor or deactivated or reprogrammed against your will. Creating AI with free will raises serious ethical questions. And if we wanna be moral beings in the first place, is it even moral to create beings of free will? And if intelligence and free will become commodified and owned by humans, what does that say about our own morality? Why did we use our free will to do something like this, which is taking away free will from all of these autonomous agents? In fact, just being totally Totally frank, when I actually think about that, I sometimes hope, or at least I find relief in thinking that there's a good chance that what we think is free will actually isn't. It might be us lying to ourselves. There's some evidence out there that when the brain halves have been separated because of surgery, one side of the brain will confabulate a story for why it's doing something to the other side of the brain. We see something a little bit similar with hypnotism when somebody's told under hypnosis to do something and then they're asked why they're doing it and they end up confabulating a reason that's sensible, but it's after the fact and it's not actually why they did it in the first place. There's also some evidence that inside of the brain there's early patterns that can predict where a rat is gonna move left or right in a maze before the rat makes the decision, and some other sort of anecdotal things that seem like that's similar in humans. And if all of that is the case, then this is mostly an illusion of control that we're living with. Maybe there was a reason that it was in the best interest for continuing to pass on our genetics to actually have our brains give us an illusion of control. By the way, David Shapiro is now one of my three Patreons. Link below, smash that subscribe button. See you in the next video.